In part one of this series on the spiritual evolution of bipolar disorder, I demonstrated how, as a society and as individuals, we are spiritually evolving from lower levels of consciousness to higher levels through a gradual stage-like dissolving of the layers of our ego, or false self. And through this process, as our egos die one layer at a time, our souls are able to experience more of the real world and express themselves in a more authentic way, moving gradually from a more fearful closed state to a more open loving state. And now in this video I want to provide a little bit more hard evidence of how this evolution is happening and as you'll see the evolution of our consciousness has a lot to do with the perspective, or should I say perspectives, from which we can see the world around us. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Now I'm going to deal with the tribal level of consciousness a little bit later because it's a very complex subject. However, at the feudal level of consciousness, we still only have one perspective on life, and that is our own. And at this level, who we are is clearly our body, and basically our five senses are telling us what's the real world around us. And because this level is largely unfiltered by the mind, our response to this world is quite impulsive and selfish. And the reason is, at this level, we're simply incapable of taking in the perspectives of other people and considering those in our decision-making process. Basically, whatever we want, that's it. That's the reality. Now, if you're four or five years old at the feudal level of consciousness, maybe people might think of you as a little bossy, but it's expected for your age and can even be kind of cute. But if you're still at this level going into your 20s, you've got a lot of problems. Your selfish and impulsive desires to do whatever you want without consideration for others could have you ending up in jail or dealing drugs or involved with some other criminal element. Now unfortunately in our world today there still are cultures that are like this in different parts of the world and a good example is the slums of Rio de Janeiro which are basically controlled entirely by drug dealers. The local police are very corrupt and many of the women are involved in prostitution. And in fact, anywhere in the world where you have very high levels of unemployment, extreme poverty, very low levels of education, in this sort of environment, you're going to have a lot of people at the feudal level of consciousness. When we move to the traditional level, we go from having only one perspective on life, which is our own, to taking on a second perspective, the perspective of the culture we're living in. And with this second perspective, we start to see the world in terms of good and bad, or even good and evil. And what we learn in this duality is that basically what our parents, schools, and religions expect from us, that's considered the good, and we try and conform to that. And as for ourselves, we look at our own impulsive nature and see that as the evil or bad thing. And so, for better or for worse, we'll start to repress our inner nature in order to gain love and social approval. So needless to say, there's a fair amount of repression that happens at this level, but it's not all bad. These days, repression gets a bad rap, but when you're moving from the feudal level of consciousness, the repression of your selfish ways is a needed thing. And throughout history, it's been religion that's helped people find the straight and narrow for the most part, because people at the feudal level usually can't do it on their own. They need strong leadership and structure to help them become better people. Now, traditional culture is pretty easy to find in America today. Just go to any small town, particularly in the Bible Belt, and you're going to find a way of life that really reflects this two-perspective way of thinking. At the modern level of consciousness, we take on a third perspective, and that perspective is of the rational mind. At this point, we're no longer satisfied just obeying certain rules because they're written down in a book. We want to start actually looking at the facts of a situation. So for many people entering the modern level of consciousness, they find their religion quite difficult to deal with. For example, they might start to question creation stories like the world starting with Adam and Eve. Or they might have even deeper rational questions like, if they're going to heaven because they're Christians, what does that say about the billions of people in the world that are not Christian? And then there's the biggest question of all, does God even exist? And for the modern mind, if you're going to argue the existence of God, you better have your facts straight. And then along with all the rational questions that religions are unable to answer, there's also the problem of the conformity as well. For many modern people, strong rituals like needing to pray every day or even five times a day, having to be at church every Sunday or Saturday, or even things like no sex before marriage can just seem too restrictive and too conformist for their liking. 
And as a result, it's not uncommon for many modern people to walk away from their religions or even become atheists or agnostic. And I think the best example of a modern level of consciousness can be seen in New York City, where people are not praying to God for success, but actually getting out and working their butts off to get it. Now, once you move through the modern mind, something remarkable happens. Because basically what you start to see is that no matter how hard you work, no matter how successful you become, there's still a certain emptiness inside of you. Because, you see, all along this journey of life, you're being told that your happiness, your satisfaction is just up ahead, just up ahead, and yet it never quite arrives. And it's at this point that many people start to ask themselves, you know, what is the meaning of my life? What is the purpose of my life? And why am I here? And so while the rational mind does get rid of the irrational beliefs of the lower levels of consciousness, it also starts to come to the logical conclusion that rationally, life is completely meaningless. And there's something about that answer that simply just doesn't compute. And so in growing exhausted of the cold rationality of the modern mind, a person awakens to the multiple perspective view of the postmodern mind, especially because until now you've had the assumption that there is a certain fixed reality out there that you're responding to. But all of a sudden now you're even starting to question the nature of reality and the nature of who you are as a human being. For the postmodern level of consciousness, there is no one truth out there like the rational mind believes or the religious mind believes or even the impulsive feudal mind believes that there are many truths for many different people and it's impossible for any one person to say who's right and who owns the entire truth. Now with this passion for diversity from a spiritual standpoint, it's at the postmodern level that people really start to explore different ways of approaching spirituality and religion. And as a result, there's a lot of what has been referred to as the New Age movement in this postmodern level of consciousness. And that movement has taken a lot of criticism because it seems to encompass all kinds of different belief systems. But that's what to be expected at the postmodern level because the postmodern level is so open, it really doesn't discriminate at all against one style of thinking or another, provided that that style of thinking is not exclusive. And that's why in the 1990s you really saw a surge in interest in things like Eastern spirituality, Hinduism and Buddhism. You saw a boom in tarot cards and tarot card readings, psychics of all kinds, as well as an explosion in self-help books and spiritual books like the Celestine Prophecy, which was number one on the New York Times list for an entire year. And of course, let's not forget the quantum physics, which had everybody asking themselves, what the fuck do we know? And maybe that should be the mantra for the postmodern level of consciousness, because at this level, your focus is on taking in different perspectives and trying to come to a mutual understanding. And as a result, sometimes it's a quite confusing level to be at, and especially in the world of work, it can take a very long time to make a set decision, because who am I to say if my opinion is better than yours? Now, as you go through the postmodern level of consciousness, you start to realize a few blind spots to this level. The first being that this level is very complicated because you're always looking at different perspectives. And out of this, you start to realize that you need to develop something within you to help you decide amongst different opinions which is the best way to go. And that thing you need to develop, we call our intuition. Now keep in mind, this doesn't mean closing your eyes to alternate perspectives. It just means being able to intuitively choose which is the better perspective to go with depending on the situation. It also means learning to trust your feelings. Because the intuitive voice is not coming from the mind. It's coming from your soul. And you can only hear the voice of your soul when you're in the present moment. Now, if you haven't figured it out by now, being in the present moment means being in an open state, a state of love. Anytime we're in a state of love, we're in the present moment. Anytime we're in the present moment, we're in a state of love. And so in truth, at every level of consciousness, there's been moments where we have been at the power of now level, at this higher state of awareness. The trouble is, we just never realized it. That's because the other levels of consciousness had a different underlying focus, which was staying alive. But here the focus shifts from staying alive to being alive. And that makes all the difference.
Now, before I get to any conclusions on the spiritual evolution of bipolar disorder, we need to take a look at the tribal level of consciousness, and in particular, the role of shamanism. Because as you'll see, if you want to understand the bipolar mind, first you need to understand the shamanic mind.